bolt to go in. That is the and it should be used. <laughs> so I've got the, um, let's take a little. Now then crew, welcome to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Um, this is another one of those very short, how to set up your Picoscope kind of videos. Uh, for a particular uh, to capture a particular signal now uh, obviously using the same bike on the hoist and this one is going to be um, a video showing you how to set up to test the vehicle speed sensor that's the signal that goes up to the dash and into the ECU that basically gives the, the ECU an idea of how fast the bike's going ie your speed so to speak uh, now of course we're going to be using the old Pico scope again this is the this is the really basic one, 2000 series. It's about the cheapest one you can get from Picoscope. So I'm just really you know, getting my head around using it and proving just how useful even the most basic oscilloscope is. Right, we'll head over to the bike. I'll show you which wire it is on the ECU and uh, we'll get it all wired up and take some samples. Here we go. Okay, so the wire we're gonna use is the white wire. Goes into the ECU, we're just gonna back probe that. Now I did have some problems getting a good connection on this one for some reason, but hopefully that feels pretty good. Right, so we've got our little picoscope probe that can clip onto there. Make sure you, if you're using these little pins, make sure that you're off the, uh, the plastic. There's like a little, little bit of plastic near the end just underneath that little ball. And quite often that can trick you to thinking you've got a good connection. And we'll just go onto the frame for a ground this time because it's, it's not, wire's not quite long enough for going on to the battery okay right let's plug in the picoscope okay USB in first I reckon makes no difference really and we're going to use channel A you should always use channel A as your first channel B is pretty lazy I'd never use B okay so now we just open up the picoscope as usual click on the icon shouldn't take too long Come on, little picoscope, you can do it. Right. I'm sort of getting the hang of this now. I keep finding new features every time I use it. Okay, so time base, we're going to use 500 milliseconds per division. And for our voltage, I had to play around with this, and I found that 10 volts plus or minus is about the best for, for that. Now, of course, it already starts running, which is a bit of a weird Real pain, but so we'll stop that, and uh, I'll go and spin the front wheel. Oh, I need to turn the ignition as well. So I'll turn on the ignition. There we go. Right, and we'll take a take a reading. There we go. Brilliant stuff. Okay, so what did we get? Let's have a little look. Let's go back to screen one, and we can zoom in a little bit. Now, if you haven't got a touch screen, you can just use this function up here, look, and that basically makes it bigger for you. And we can use a little grabby hand, and we can move it across. Okay, so at this point here is where I actually started to spin the wheel, and we started to get a signal. So we've got zero volts, because this is a self-generating sensor, it creates its own voltage. It's induced. So you can see here, um, the wheel is actually just, it's speeding up. The wider this block is, the slower the wheel is rotating. So this is it sort of still speeding up. And I probably let go of the wheel by about here. And uh, you can see here, look, that these are all pretty consistent. As I slowly scroll across, you'll see they'll start to get wider and wider and wider. Because don't forget that wheel is now slowing down. And go on to screen number two, get it into view because it's already zoomed in. There we go, look. And we've got some pretty weird ones going on here. Look, we've got some varying voltages, probably because the wheel's getting this rotational speed is so slow now. Uh, we've got, what have we got there? We've got about four volts. Yeah, 4.2 volts. There's a peak. Oh, 
Go to that. There we go. Nope. 4.7 volts. Back to screen one. And the voltage pretty much stayed the same regardless of the speed. It did. It's a square wave. There we are. Look. Okay. So all of these should be about the same. It's a bit weird when we actually got a decreased voltage because all of these. Yeah, 4.7. On to screen two. And we've got a short one, didn't we? Look down here. That's strange. Very strange. Okay, I wonder if there's a. No, there can't be. Without any other runner. Nope. A glitch in the matrix. Hmm. Very strange. Also a strange look that when it finished and the wheel came to a stationary halt, we had five volts. So maybe it's not a self-generating. It can be. It can't be a self-generating sensor. It must be supplied five volts from the ECU. Yeah. Maybe I'll take one more wave form. Let's just save this first. Save as what do we call it? Vehicle speed sensor two. Yeah, saved forever. Okay, so I'm just going to try and turn it reasonably slowly. Uh, so I can watch. Right. Oh, there we are, look. Let's just zoom all the way out. Let's see what the hell's going on. Start again. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a, um, it's obviously got five volts supplied, and I'm going really slowly with the wheel. Yeah, that's really cool. And then if you have a spin, there we go. Awesome stuff. Okay, so we had five pages there, look. So we'll go back to the start. And it's not a self-generating um, sensor. Oh, it looks at it, this one. It get, must get a five volt um, supply from the ECU. And basically, um, as the, uh, the wheel rotates, regardless of speed, you know, oh, there we go. It, it will actually switch this at a very, very low speed, which is great. Which probably also means you're gonna get a really accurate slow speed speedo reading. It's pretty cool. And you can see here, if I uh, just scroll across, I should maybe change the time base a little bit, there you go. That was the wheel spinning at about 10 kilometers an hour. I quickly glanced at the speedo. And you can see here, look how much wider these are. And that wheel, I was turning very, very slowly and it was still giving me a signal output. It's bloody good. And if you had a problem with your speedo on the, uh, on the bike, you know, if these weren't nice sharp 90s, or maybe it was a bit irregular. See, there's a little tiny bit of noise uh, on the bottom and the top, and the peak and the trough, but that's obviously quite acceptable. If that was much noisier, it might be that there's some, some damage to the sensor and that the ECU is not actually going to recognize that square wave signal and it'll reject it and it'll think that the bike's stationary. And what the ECU would do if the bike's stationary, I don't really know. Not going to turn the bike off, is it? Okay, well there you go. That's how to set up your PicoScope to uh, record a uh, signal from your speed sensor. Bloody good. Right, so there you go. Very quickly, how to use your PicoScope to set up uh, to measure the output signal from a wheeled speed sensor on that motorcycle. Um, I hope you found it helpful. I know I did, it's the first time I've ever actually done it. And so it does just goes to show that Picoscopes must be pretty damned easy to use if I can, uh, if I can wear them. <laughs> Alright crew, if you enjoyed the video, why not click on the subscribe button. You'll see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon, then you can tick the box to turn on notifications. Or you can also click the little bell thing now that you see on your smartphone or your tablet. Um, you'll also find me on Facebook, 
Instagram, Google Plus and Twitter. Uh, feel free to communicate through any of those portals. However, first point of contact on YouTube comments if you wouldn't mind. That's where the videos are and that's where people tend to read all the comments and ask the questions and find answers to the questions that they're thinking about posting and things. Um, makes it more sense, doesn't it? All right, crew. Well, uh, until next time. Oh, one last thing. I'll put a, uh, a link to the New Zealand supplier of Picoscopes in the description for you. All right, guys. Cheers. Over and out.